Alright, hello, citizens of the Nigerverse. It is Nigeria once again, and welcome back to System Shock Radio. So, got some uh, kind of interesting, cool, cool, potentially fun, what have you, topics for today. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, uh, the, the first thing we're going to talk about is a bit of a doozy, you people. And that is that Amber Heard is going to still be in Aquaman 2. So, uh, of course, a lot of you may have heard of the Amber Heard heard um johnny depp have uh a trial and everything that happened throughout uh, i believe last year or um it was wild times and i'm saying of course uh johnny depp coming out victorious in that ads and amber heard a lot of negative publicity on her which me personally i think is kind of earned given uh, her behavior and everything but uh apparently she's still gonna be in aquaman too now Oh, um, whether or not uh, I'm going to see Aquaman 2, I don't even know for sure, but, uh, it's definitely going to be a kind of a, you know, I give it definitely a negative look, uh, in Aquaman, um, is this going to be for Aquaman 2, who, um, having someone with this much notoriety behind her, all these people who are giving her all this backlash and everything, and yet she's still going to be in the movie, uh, bull. Uh, bold choice, DC. Bold choice. But it probably shouldn't be too surprising considering Ezra Miller and all the trouble that they've been causing. The fact that they're still going to be The Flash in uh, the Flash movie. He, um, he again, a very bold strategy. I guess uh, they didn't want to recast Amber Heard or Ezra Miller. Or, but it, uh, so, sometimes with a lot of the negative press going on, not all publicity is good publicity. Sometimes you do have to let it go. Oh, but we'll still see how the movie does and everything. Um, and I, honestly, like, her role in Aquaman was, like, okay. Hey, of course, as uh, Mera. Uh, and, and, but uh, with all this extra negative publicity surrounding her, uh, we'll see how it affects the movie. I imagine it's going to affect the movie very negatively. It, all that negative publicity around her. But uh, we'll see uh, how it plays out. Oh, but uh, the next thing I want to talk about, speaking of uh, castings, let's talk about some potential Fantastic Four casting. So some names have been thrown around um, for a little while now, oh, pretty much since like last year and kind of the year before. But now oh, they're kind of starting to ramp up uh, a bit here. Uh, and several reports, so keep that in mind. There are several reports going on now about these castings and everything, so definitely keep those in mind, and this is all speculation on my part here. Um, here, so some of the castings that I've seen, uh, Adam Driver, who of course was Kylo Ren in uh, the, aka Ben Solo in the Star Wars movies, which I reviewed, uh, the Star Wars sequel trilogy, which I reviewed, so if you haven't already, go check out those reviews. But, um, but yeah, so him, at, him going to be in the movie, uh, uh, I think they said they potentially wanted him as Doctor Doom or uh, Mr. Fantastic, it, uh, possibly one of the two. Uh, I saw reports saying Margot Robbie might have been cast as Sue Storm, aka uh, Invisible Woman, and uh, of course Margot Robbie, e. Harley Quinn, in which uh, I, I think I could see he being pulled off. Uh, same with uh, Adam Driver. Or I think Adam Driver, for his credit, did okay. Hey, it's just the character was kind of weirdly written. Uh, but I think those would be some uh, decent choices. Uh, I, I forgot who they said had uh, to potentially be Human Torch in the movie. But uh, n so far, nothing official has come out in terms of casting, so we'll still have to wait and see. But if those uh, if those are at least a couple of the choices, I don't think I'd be uh, too upset with those choices. But nevertheless, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the results of the WWE Draft, which took place it's last week. Uh, night one was on April 28th. It's so oh, last Friday, and then uh, night two took place on Raw uh, uh, this past Monday. What? Okay, first of all, right off the bat, at um, a couple things right off the bat. For stars, I'm looking here on WWE.com to see the draft results, and um, and they have night two listed before night one. And uh, I guess because Raw obviously comes before SmackDown in the week. Which brings us to my next question. Why didn't they just have Night 1 on Raw and Night 2 on SmackDown? Why did you have to separate them like that? That's really weird. But I'm going to start off with Night 1, uh, the draft picks. So in Round 1 for SmackDown, 
um, Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman went to SmackDown. Why did they separate the Usos and uh, the rest of the Bloodline uh, uh, in the draft? Uh, it's, it didn't really make any sense. It's going to make even less sense when I, when I get to Night 2's draft picks. But then Raw is Cody Rhodes. So Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns are on separate brands, which uh, is a bit, which is kind of a... Kind of not a great sign. A lot of people want Cody Rhodes to finally knock Roman off his perch. Looks like for now, that might not happen. And uh, Although, granted, a lot of superstars end up showing up on whatever brand they want anyway. Hey, so uh, we'll have to see. But, uh, uh, of course, uh, Roman Reigns is going to keep the uh, undisputed Universal Championship. And meanwhile, Raw has the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which I also talked about. So if you haven't already, go check out that oh, my uh, discussion on that. But... Uh, yeah, so Roman and Cody are on separate brands. Roman Ro Reigns, of course, sticking on SmackDown. Been on SmackDown since, I believe, 2019. And so Roman fully um, he fu fully SmackDown now, uh, which is uh, interesting. But uh, uh, then the next picks were for SmackDown is Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair. And then uh, for Raw was Becky Lynch. So I guess... Uh, uh, Bianca Belair is going to become the SmackDown Women's Champion, and we'll see why in just a moment. And then round two uh, for SmackDown was uh, the Street Profits. It's uh, which is pretty cool that they're headed, I think, back to uh, SmackDown. Uh, and then, uh, and then for Raw, uh, they got Imperium, which of course is Gunther, Ludwig Kaiser, and Giovanni Vinci meeting. <laughs> Not only are they headed to Raw, but also the Intercontinental Championship is now back on Raw, uh, which uh, I feel like I kind of associate the Intercontinental Championship with Raw anyway. Hey, um, hey, uh, it was on SmackDown for a while, I think since 2019. In, uh, as when it moved to Raw, but uh, back in the day, hey, uh, before the move, uh, the Arcano Championship was on Raw, and then the United States Championship was on SmackDown. <laughs> Then, uh, speaking of which, the next person to SmackDown is Edge. Edge, so Edge is heading back to SmackDown. I think it's the first time Edge has been a SmackDown superstar, or since um, since his return in 2020. He, and I think he operated more as a free agent uh, when he was challenging Roman Reigns for the uh, Universal Championship. Let me know if I am correct or incorrect about that. Uh, but then, and heading to Raw will be Matt Riddle, so Matt Riddle will be sticking on Raw. Uh, then in round three, he, uh, Bobby Lashley is headed to SmackDown, um, and Drew McIntyre is headed to Raw. Uh, so Bobby Lashley is he heading back to SmackDown, and Drew McIntyre heading back to Raw. Uh, um, of course, Drew McIntyre was uh, part of Raw for a while, and uh, especially ruled it as WWE Champion, and Bobby Lashley heading back to SmackDown, which he was on back in the day. Uh, and then heading to SmackDown is the OC, which has uh, AJ Styles, Meechin, uh, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson, of course. Uh, first of all, I forgot uh, Meechin is still technically a part of the OC, but also AJ Styles, the f I was a SmackDown superstar again for the first time in a little while. Uh, I feel like AJ Styles, of course, her start, her, uh, uh, started off before the reintroduction of the uh, brand split. It, uh, before the second brand split in 2016, then was drafted to SmackDown. Of course, SmackDown, the house that AJ Styles built, and then went to Raw starting in 2018, I think. He has pretty much stayed there ever since, I think, except for a brief period of time in either 2019 or 2020. He, but then, and now he is headed back to SmackDown here, which is going to be interesting. And then headed to Raw as a Miz, so Miz is staying on Raw. Uh, then in round four, uh, Bailey Dakota Kai and Io Sky, aka Damage Control, is headed to SmackDown. A um, very interesting choice. And then Shinsuke Nakamura is headed to Raw. Uh, uh, so, in oh, uh, interesting. Shinsuke Nakamura is going to be. Yeah, um, I forgot the last time uh, Shinsuke Nakamura was on Raw. Uh, but uh, uh, Damage Control heading to SmackDown is going to be interesting, and especially with Io Sky preparing to have. A women's championship match uh, against Bianca Belair. Her, um, or, or did she have her cha championship match already? Uh, let me know if she did. Hit, I might have missed it. it uh, might have forgotten. But uh, anyway, next up, headed to SmackDown is the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, and it's, uh, Alpha Fire and Isla Dawn, and, and then the NX, and then head to Raw is the NXT Women's Champion and Indy Hartwell. So great! That means the NXT Women's Championship has to be vacated, which it was on this past episode of NXT. 
Uh, I hate when they do that. When, especially when Indy just won the title, where someone wins, like the tower's holding the XE title, and they're forced to vacate it because they're being called up. Like, why not have them drop the title first and then call them up? But, but uh, no, have less with the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions heading up. Uh, there's a chance they might vacate them, but apparently they're going to be taking them, so uh, some people have suggested that they might combine uh, combine the uh, NXT Women's Tag Team Championships with the main roster Women's Tag Team Championships, so we'll see if that's the case. But then on the SmackDown Lowdown, which I, it, I guess is um, the show after SmackDown, uh, they had some more picks. Uh, ha also had to Raw would be Eric and Ibar and Valhalla, all of the Viking Raiders. Uh, headed to Raw. Oh, then Dexter Loomis, Candice LeRae, Massé and Mansoir, a, of the Maximum Male Miles, as well as Maxine Dupree. He, uh, then Zoe Stark, J.D. McDonough, uh, and Apollo Crews, all from NXT. He, uh, then Natalia, Sonya Deville, and Chelsea Green as well. Oh, uh, of course, uh, Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green, a tag team, and so they're all going to be headed to Raw. And then head to SmackDown is uh, Top Dollar, Ashanti, The Adonis, and B-Fab of Hit Row, and Lacey Evans. And then the free agents are going to be Omas, Mustafa Ali, Dolph Ziggler, and Von Wagner. And then uh, for night two, who, uh, who uh, over on Raw, again, why didn't they just um, do who would like night one Raw, night two SmackDown? I don't know, but nevertheless, uh, in round one, on the first pick for Raw was naturally the SmackDown Women's Champion Rhea Ripley, meaning that her and Bianca Belair are gonna swap the titles. So, oh joy. Uh, and then head to SmackDown as the United States Champion Austin Theory, which makes sense because you know uh, Gunther is now headed to Raw, so the United States Championship is coming over to um, to SmackDown. And I guess we're not getting that way reunion just yet. Uh, and then and headed to Raw is Seth freaking Rollins. On the, and then head to SmackDown is gonna be Charlotte Flair, or and and uh, uh, looks like like uh, Brock Lesnar was announced to be a free agent by uh, Triple H, which I think they said the free agents uh, can travel between the shelves as they please, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, then headed then in round two headed to Raw is the undisputed tag team champions Sam, Hammy Zayn and Kevin Owens meaning either a they're gonna drop one of the titles or b those titles are gonna be combined and then new ones are gonna be introduced to SmackDown and then headed to SmackDown is the Usos rejoining the Bloodline and again why were they separated in the first place then headed to Raw uh, is gonna be uh, Finn Balor Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio of the Judgment Day meaning uh, they are gonna be sticking with Rhea Ripley as part of the Judgment Day and then Head to SmackDown will be Rey Mysterio, Santos Escobar, Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wilde, and Selena Vega of the LWO or the Latino World Order. Or, uh, headed to SmackDown. Um, so, so uh, then in round three, he uh, headed to Raw were the WWE winning, Women's Tag Team Champions Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. And then head to SmackDown was Asuka. Uh, so. A lot of pretty cool choices there. Then next up, head to Raw was uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston of the New Day. A lot of people uh, are wondering if Big E will be healthy enough to come back and rejoin them. Only time will tell. And then head to SmackDown is Sheamus, Butch, and Rich Holland, and aka the Bra aka the Brawling Brutes. So they're headed to SmackDown. They're gonna stay on SmackDown. Uh, then in round four, headed to Raw is Trish Stratus. So I guess uh, after a heel turn and now with the drive, it looks like Trish Stratus is gonna be back part of the active roster, which is cool. Well, uh, and then and head to SmackDown is gonna be uh, Karrion Cross and Scarlett. It's uh, it, uh then. It head to Raw is going to be Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, so they're going to be sticking on Raw. And then SmackDown, on head to SmackDown is going to be LA Knight. Yeah. <laughs> and then round five, I've, uh, I've which, which uh, well, maybe I'll mention it um, at some other point. But uh, next up in round five, I've headed to Raw is going to be Braun Strowman and Ricochet, hey, who I guess aren't a right well, they, they've been an official tag team for a little while now. I oh, uh, wonder if they'll actually pop the tag team titles on them. And then head to SmackDown is going to be Shotzi. Yeah, I forgot they took away her last name. Why did they take away her last name? What's wrong with saying Shotzi, Bla Shotzi Blackheart? Or why is it just Shotzi? Uh, anyway, headed to Raw is going to be Bronson Reed. So I guess uh, uh, 
the match between Bronson, Bobby, and Austin Theory is going to be the, the end of the feud between Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed, the end of the little mini feud. But then head to SmackDown is going to be Elton Prince and Kit Wilson of Pretty Deadly. He, um, he apparently... they. Apparently it was rumored that they were going to change the name to the Gruesome Twosome. Looks like they're not going to do that for now. I hope they don't do that because that name sounds, sounds, sounds really, really atrocious. Uh, but anyway, and then uh, in round six, uh, Otis and Chad Gable of Alpha Academy are headed to Raw. Rick Boogs is headed to SmackDown, meaning no reunion between Nakamura and Rick Boogs. Uh, then uh, head to Raw is Katana Chance and Caden Carter are also being called up for NXT. And then headed to SmackDown is Cameron Grimes. He's heading to the moon. And then uh, in the other selections on the Raw talk, uh, uh, head to Raw will be Akira Tozawa, Angel and Humberto, Dana Brooke, Emma, uh, Inda Shirt. Her, which of course is Veer and uh, and, and uh, Sanga as well as Jinder Mahal, uh, Johnny Gargano, Nikki Cross, Odyssey Jones owns also being called up. Uh, Piper Niven, Riddick Moss, no longer Mad Cat Moss, but Riddick Moss now. Tegan Knox and Zia Lee, and head to SmackDown will be Grayson Waller. Are also being called up and Tamina, and then the free agents will be Baron Corbin, Shelton Benjamin, and Cedric Alexander. Or, uh, uh, so they're gonna be sticking as a team, and then Elias and Zion Quinn. So, oh, a uh, few things of no. Oh, some interesting choices. Uh, some people obviously staying with their brands. Uh, some going to different brands, and but also a lot of NXT call ups. Uh, a lot of people who who I'm sure they feel ready. They feel are ready for the main roster, or hopefully a lot of them get a decent push. Sadly, I don't think all of them will. Well, hopefully at least a few of them do. But yeah, some interesting draft choices. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the draft and everything. Uh, but next thing I want to talk about you know, is is heading over to the other side of the wrestling world, AEW. Uh, we're gonna talk about both Double or Nothing 2023 coming up and uh, later in this month, and they're all in show that they're doing in Wembley. So, Double or Nothing 2023, now that we're getting closer to the pay-per-view, now a lot of the matches are starting to take shape. We officially have our main event, which is going to be the Four Pillars Fatal 4-Way match uh, between MJF, Darby Allin, Sammy Guevara, and uh, Jungle Boy for the AEW World Championship. If, um, then we may have a potential uh, a TNT title match between Wardlow and Christian Cage uh, again, and a lot of this is aside from the AEW World Championship match because that's been pretty much like announced, announced and is confirmed to take place. Uh, we may possibly have a TNT Championship match between Christian Cage and uh, the champion Wardlow. Oh, um, which sucks. Uh, I wish they gave Powerhouse Hobbs a longer reign, but um, but nope. Uh, Christian Cage is gonna be battling Wardlow for the title. Well, um, we may possibly have the Outcasts versus uh, the AEW the original slash homegrown talent hence, uh, doing the whole kind of like XWE versus is um, versus the homegrown AEW women's talent, and and we may also have Adam Cole and or others versus Chris Jericho and or the Jericho Appreciation Society. <laughs> uh, so, oh, um, interesting matches so far. Are, um, the fact that a lot of these are kind of being built up last minute, it is a bit disappointing, but I guess they didn't want to get hit too much too soon. But uh, my thing with the World Championship match is, why did it take till like this past Wednesday? Hey, because the match was just announced on Wednesday. Why did it take till then to actually announce that uh, this match was going to take place? Hey, it's like, hey, why, why did we have to go through all that just for them to announce it as a fail four way? If they had done that, like, Pretty much from the beginning, and then uh, built it up from there. I think the build would have been a bit better, but that's just me. It's kind of a weird way they went about setting this match up. Like, why not have Tony Khan and just say, like, like, hey, I feel like all three of these guys, of course, Jungle Boy, Sammy Guevara, and Darby Allen, are all uh, deserving of a world championship match. So I'm gonna give it to them. Uh, of course, this all came about after her uh, Jungle Boy, Darby Allen, and Sammy Guevara. All crash MGS rebar mitzvah, uh, and, and uh, pretty much tried to stake their claim to the AEW World Championship, and then we kind of got started from there. But why couldn't I just start it from, or, uh, from there, Aaron? Just ha have the match announced and then build from there. But uh, maybe that's just me. 
He, uh, so we'll see he, uh, the other stuff being built up. And then, of course, uh, All It, and, uh, which I believe is AEW's uh, UK debut, the United Kingdom, of course, first debut in Wembley Stadium, the legendary Wembley Stadium, um, uh, so far are uh, selling really well. One of the, uh, one of the biggest, I uh, believe, even one of the one of the largest pay per view buyouts uh, in wrestling history before the show, and they haven't even announced any matches yet. That's insane, and I am excited to see where the show goes. It was, uh, but it's weird that a lot of people are giving AEW all kinds of flack like for the show and everything. It's really strange. Like, like what? Like what's all the complaining for? <laughs> or a lot of people trying to find every excuse in the book to tear down AEW's credibility here. Like. Hey, what happened to being like happy and excited for wrestling? Hey, I'll maintain if you want to enjoy wrestling, probably best to stay off the internet because the internet will definitely ruin wrestling for you in a lot of uh, regards, or unless it's watching the Nidoverse on YouTube. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really weird. Like, why um, why are people like upset and complaining about this? Why can't they be happy that the show is happening? I'm I'm personally excited uh, for the show and I. I uh, can't wait to see what they do for it and everything. But uh, the last thing I want to talk about, and I guess it's kind of funny that I mentioned that, because the last thing I want to talk about is celebrating other success. And I promise I didn't come up with that topic just because of, of my thoughts on All In, which it's pretty cool that um, they're going back to All In. And, of course, that was AEW's inaugural event and pretty much the event that got everything rolling. And the backstory behind All In is an interesting one. And it's something I definitely plan on talking about at some point in the future. But uh, the last thing I want to talk about is celebrating other success. So, oh, um, celebrating other success, celebrating others' achievements. It's one of the things I love to do whenever I see one of my friends or family members posting on social media or telling me in person or on the phone or however or that something big is happening for them, whether it's a new job, they got married, uh, they proposed. Posed, um, even if they found like 10 bucks on the street you know, outside, I'd, I'm happy for them and I'm celebrating them. And it's something that I wish more people did it, but I'd, sadly there's quite a few people consumed by jealousy in um, trying to uh, compare their lives to other people, which doesn't allow them to celebrate others which is why they say comparison is the thief of joy. Like, be happy with your success, of course, but also celebrate other people. When other people do good, celebrate them on that. Uh, even if your time hasn't come yet for something, and when someone gets something great, why not celebrate them? Him, him, and celebrate them not just because they're your friend or family, or however, or, but also because as um, uh, I could lead to you getting your own success but in the meantime be happy for other people well um celebrate other people be happy for other people for those of you out there who have got a new job congratulations to you for those of you who are about to graduate college i know there's some of my friends who are about to graduate college congrats to you guys uh going from high school to college going from middle school to high school we'll go from elementary to middle school moving great aids uh, for those who were getting married for those who just proposed for those of you who who anything good would happen in your life congrats to you who uh, i'm happy for you and i'm excited for you and uh being excited for other people is a wonderful feeling <laughs> not just it's because it shows you care but also because as uh things are worth being celebrated and and uh, it make it does my heart good to see other people succeeding in life, especially those I'm connected to, who uh, uh, seeing my friends and family succeeding in life and doing good in life definitely warms my heart, and it's definitely a fantastic thing. But nevertheless, that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, turn on post notifications so you know every time I upload a video so you can see as soon as it drops. Uh, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on anything I talked about in this episode, and I will see you guys later. Peace.